again, motion peeps, and welcome back to the Big Blue. Today we're going to create the bioluminescence for our sweet jellyfish. So put your flippers on and let's dive back in. And to do this bioluminescence, we start in After Effects. You probably remember our jelly insides looked something like this, quite dull and uninspiring. So I just went through and played with some cloners and simple shapes in Cinema 4D and created this thing. So I'm going to import this new one and the jellyfish veins that we had. I'll drag the jellyfish innards into our timeline, which creates a new comp for us. I'll remain that new comp, Bioluma, because that's the bioluminescence. And then I'll start by just masking out these half moon shapes here. So now I have this simple mask subtracting the center bit, uh, nice, soft and feathered. I also want to add a levels adjustment to this layer and then just really bring up the black points so we get rid of some of those finer detailed lines there. Because I don't want too much detail in there, I want these main lines to really stand out. Now we'll create a white solid. I'll make it 1k by 1k, which is half the size of our comp, which is fine. And then I will just press Alt Command F to fit that to the comp. Then I'm going to double click on the ellipse tool, which creates a perfectly circular mask around that. I'll bring up the mask options and start by entering a negative mask expansion. So I can track the mask to inside the bits I want to glow. Then I'll set a keyframe for that at the start frame. Move to the middle of the comp halfway through. The comp is set to four seconds. So I'll move to two seconds where I expand the mask out to outside the bits I want to glow. Good. And then I'll just easy ease that keyframe, the last one. Then I'll duplicate that mask, set the copy to subtract, and then just, uh, just feather the duplicated mask. I think 150 probably does the trick. Then I want to easy ease the initial keyframe and set the last keyframe to linear. And now we have this movement bit of a pulse. I actually want the subtractive mask to start a bit more expanded so I will increase the expansion so we lose some of that white and then I will offset the keyframe a few frames ahead and then do the same at the end as well as expand the mask of that keyframe. Then I want to copy the keyframes for both the masks and paste them in behind so we have the animation repeating so we have the animation happen twice during our four seconds. It's a rather nice wob. But I do want to add a turbulent displace to this. So you can find that in displace, turbulent displace. And I'll tweak that slightly. I'll turn up the amount quite a lot and increase the complexity. I think I want to turn the scale down a little bit. Somewhere around there. And if I play it through, we get this effect. And I'm going to use that as a luma mat for our uh, jelly inner layer. I'm actually gonna turn up the amount for the turbulent displays even more. So now we have a bit more of a random look to this and I think I wanna make it more random. So I'm going to animate the evolution of the turbulent displays. Frame one, I'll set a keyframe, jump to the end and set the evolution revolutions to maybe two. And that just makes it a little bit more random and organic. Now I wanna do a similar thing to the jelly veins. I'm going to bring those into this comp and make a copy of our white solid, add that on top of the jelly veins and delete the second mask and delete the keyframes for the first mask and now we're just going to slightly change that. For starters I'm going to disable the turbulent displace and then I'm going to just have the mask start with the expansion set to minus 512 so there's nothing to be seen of the white solid. I'll set a keyframe for that and then jump to the end and set the expansion so it goes almost all the way out. I think 175 pixels is probably okay. Then I want to ease out that keyframe before uh, duplicating the mask, just like we did before, and setting the copy to subtract. Then going in and feathering that one again. 150 pixels work then, probably works now. And then I want to ease the initial keyframe for that one and have the end keyframe be linear. And again, I will offset the initial keyframe. Just move that one in a bit so it happens a bit later. And at the end, I want to increase the expansion of the subtractive mask so there's just nothing left of the white solid. But we have this slower wave happening. 
If we turn back on the turbulent displays now, we get some pretty cool effects. I actually want to scale that down so we get some more detail. And then I'm going to make a copy of that turbulent displays and have one with a higher scale. So now we have two layers of turbulent displays. Let's uh, solo the jelly veins layer and use that white solid for a luma mat and play it through. So now we have something that looks like a neural network, like someone's having a really brilliant idea. I'm going to set the veins to add on top. So now we have these two layers animating together. Overall looking quite organic and natural. I'm going to press Command M and render this out as a movie file and then I will see you when we add this to our jellyfish in Cinema 4D. Here in Cinema 4D our jellyfish has slightly changed. It's got his new internal organs so now it looks like this. Which in my opinion looks a lot more like a jellyfish than the old one. I've also done some tweaks to the materials, um, mainly in the jelly material. We're going to transparency. I've got the transparency set to 99.5 instead of 98. I've got the refraction set to 1.3. And I've also turned down the blurriness from 37% down to just 20%. So now it looks a bit better when you add some bioluminescence to it. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. Starting with a brand new material. I'll start by naming it Bioluma, because this is the bioluminescence. And then I'm going to go through and disable color, as well as disable reflectance, and then turn on luminance, make that slightly bluish cyan tint, and immediately turn that up to 180%, because we want it quite strong. Then I'll go into Alpha, and I'll load in this video we've just rendered out, Hit return, load that one in, go into animation of that texture and set it to loop and make sure I uncheck image alpha. So now our video is being used as a luma mat and uh, let's apply this to our jellyfish. I'll come on drag the uh, jelly innards material to copy that. I will then replace our copy with the bioluminescent material. Now let's move around and find a good angle to do a test render. And wouldn't you know, our jellyfish is glowing. It's looking quite nice. But I think we can make it look a bit nicer. Let's add some bioluma to the tentacles as well. I'll make a copy of the bioluminescent material. Rename that one Bioluma Rev in our alpha texture. Let's go to animation. And I'm just going to go ahead and swap around the start frame and the end frame. So it's going to start with the end frame and end with the start frame in essence, playing in reverse. And then I can just add this material to our 10 Ts. And they are going to have a bit of glow on them as well when we render it. Look at that, right down there on the tips. The only reason I reversed it is just to have it move slightly different from the uh, bioloom on the head. And the texture is set to UV mapping right now. And I'm just gonna leave it like that. Not because it has a good UV map or anything, but just because it still gives us some nice random looking highlights on our tentacles. Now all that's left to do really is figure out what you want to do with your jellyfish and then just, just have it do that and then you can render it out. And then you have a lovely procedural bioluminescent jelly jellyfish. So uh, good luck with your jellyfish ventures and uh, thank you for your time. And until next time, I do hope that you, much like something animated using the spline animation speed in a falloff, will stay in motion.